This is the fourth section of the sequences and series chapter. And now we move on to a geometric series. So we've looked at a geometric uh, sequence. So for example, um, something like this, uh, where the first term is one and the common ratio is three. Not that one, I think two, four, three comes next, something like that. OK, so that's the sequence. So you probably know what's coming. Um, a series is when we sum those terms together. Even if those terms are negative, finding the sum of those terms is now what we call a series. Now, just like the arithmetic series where we've got a formula to find the sum of them, we also have a formula to find the sum of the numbers in a, in a series. And um, I think on the next slide, what we'll be doing is, is proving that formula. And now the formula is given up here. Now it can be written in two different ways. And basically the one at the top, if you times it by negative one, you get the one at the bottom, yeah? They, they both do the same thing. So you can remember one or the other. Some people say, oh, you know, if uh, the common ratio is negative, they use one over the other. It doesn't really make any difference. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I prefer to use that one. I don't know why. Just like to have that number there and then take away one. But it makes no difference which one you use. They're both equivalent. Yeah. So it doesn't matter which one. Now, it says here for R not equal to one. Well, think about it. If R was one, then the terms in the sequence wouldn't change. Yeah, if R was one here, it'd be one plus one plus one plus one. Yeah, um, it, it's not geometric, is it? It's the, it's the same number each time. I suppose you could even think of it as an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of zero, if that's the case. Yeah, so uh, in the next slide, I think we are going to be showing how we derive this. And you do need to know um, how to how to get this. So here we go. Uh, first term is A, as we would expect. Common difference is R. Mistake. Common ratio is R. Tut tut. Prove that the sum of the first n terms of this series is given by that expression okay so the first thing we're going to do just like um, we did before is we are going to write out the terms of the series algebraically okay so we're going to write them out algebraically so um, I want to find the sum of n terms so let's write down what it looks like so the first term is a the second term would be a plus r, or sorry, a r, sorry. The third term would be a r squared plus dot, dot, dot. Um, the term before the last one would be a r to the n minus two, because then the nth term would be a r to the n minus one. Remember that power is always one lower than the term number. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take what we've written and multiply everything by R. So if I do that, um, A will become AR. Um, AR will become AR squared. Yeah. AR squared becomes AR cubed. Yeah. Can you see what's happening? They're sort of almost like moving across by one, aren't they? Yeah, like that plus dot 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 so at the end here i will have a r to the n minus one and then the very last term will become a r n so what i've done is i've taken the um first series and then multiplied everything by r now what i'm going to do i'm going to subtract the second series from the first one. So if I do that on this side, I'll have um, Sn, the sum of the sen num uh, n numbers, minus Rsn equals, now A's got nothing to take away from it, so 
A remains. But what's going to happen with all of these terms here? They're all going to cancel out. AR minus AR, AR squared minus AR squared, the one that's above that minus the AR cubed and so on. They're all going to cancel out. The only one that's going to be left is this ARN. So I'm going to have nothing minus ARN. So it actually becomes minus ARN. Now we're almost done. There isn't much more to do. Remember, I want to find um, uh, SN, the sum of N terms. So we're going to factorize the left hand side. So you get SN 1 minus R equals, and I could factorize the other side as well, A 1 minus Rn. Then lastly, divide both sides by 1 minus R, and we have that expression proved QET. And as I said on the first slide, that if you times everything by negative 1, they have not answer in this question. But if they did want the slightly different form, then if you times everything by negative 1, you basically get Sn equals A, and then what's in the bracket swaps around R to the N minus 1 over um, R minus 1 if you multiply everything by negative 1. We need to find the sums of these terms. So let's write down the formula over here like this, or you can use the one where the R and the 1 are swapped over, that's fine. So we need A, we need R, and we need N. So for the first one, A is 2, because that's the first term. R is 3, that's what you multiply to get the next term. And N is 10, because it says 10 terms. So all we need to do is plug that in. The sum of 10 terms is equal to uh, 2 times by 3 to the power 10 minus 1 all over 3 minus 1. Now I've worked that all out already and that gives me 59,048. So I'll just put that down there. So that's the answer to part A. Uh, for part B, uh, first term is 1024. R. Now, because it alternates between positive and negative, it means that R is negative. Each term is half the previous one, so it's negative a half, but we don't know N. But what we can use is the nth term rule to find out what N is. So if I flip that around, A is 1024. R is a half or negative a half to the power n minus 1 equals 1. So that's basically the last term. So I'm using this term here to help me find the answer. So if I know what the last term is, I can use that to find n. So um, from there, if I let's do it over here, if I divide both sides by 1024, I get negative a half n power n minus 1 equals 1 over 1024. Now, um, the next step would be that I do log of both sides. I do the log of this side and log of this side. But I'm going to run into a problem because when I try and do the log of that, it's going to come up area because we can't do the log of a negative number. That will be my next step. Log here, log here. We're going to get stuck. We're going to come up with an error. So can we deal with this negative half? Well, let's have a look at the original thing that we wrote down. So I've got 1024, which is a positive number, multiplied by this thing here, and I get a positive number. Now, the only way that's going to work is if this bit here is positive. Now, with the correct power, yes, this will become positive. But if I change this bit in a bracket to positive a half, it's not going to make any difference. It's still going to be positive anyway. So I'm going to make this positive a half so I don't encounter that problem of trying to do the log of a negative number because actually it's an equivalent 
calculation. Yeah, unusual thing, you may not necessarily spot that, but that's what we need to do. So we change that to a positive. Now we can do the log of both sides. So we'll do the log of um, half to the power of n minus one, I was just about to write n plus one, n minus one equals the log of one over 1024. That means that I can move the power to the front. So I've got n minus one log, I was going to write long, log half equals log one over 1024. So I'm going to do two steps in one here. I'm going to divide both sides by log half and then add one to both sides. So I'll get n equals uh, log 1 over 1024 over log half plus 1. Now I know on a class with calculators if you want to type log in you've got to put a base in so you've got to do like log um, base 10 or base whatever. Now on a question like this it doesn't matter what base you use you'll get the same answer. Now I'm actually going to save a bit of time. I'm actually going to use natural log because remember that's log to the base E. If I use the natural log button, it saves me having to actually um, uh, type that base in. On old calculators, you could press log and it and it would give you it automatically assume it's log to the base 10. On a class with calculator, that's the FX991 EX. When you press log, it's waiting for you to type a base in. So to save time, because it doesn't matter what base I use, I'm going to do log. And I'm going to press the natural log button, which means I don't need to uh, worry about typing a base in. I can just do natural log. Um, 1 over 1024 divided by natural log uh, 0 0.5, which gives me 10 plus 1 gives me 11. So whatever base you use, you get the same answer. So over here, we'll just put n is 11. Now that we know what n is, so let's rub out the question mark and we can now put 11 there. We can now work out what the sum of these 11 terms are because we worked out n is 11. So that's going to be a, r, so that's a negative a half, I'm going to put that in brackets, to the power n, which is 11, minus 1, over r minus 1, which is negative a half, minus 1. This might be a case where if you use the other form with the r and minus 1, so you've got 1 minus r, this avoids having like the negative and negative uh, here, but really, is it going to make a huge difference? Well, we'll get exactly the same answer. So I'm going to type that in fraction 1024. I'm going to need two brackets because I want to do negative a half. And I want to close that bracket and then put power 11. So we've got to be careful typing this in. Minus one, close bracket. And then at the bottom, negative a half. Negative a half, almost got there. Uh, minus one. And we get 683. So 683 as my sum of those 11 terms. I'll just highlight that. Whenever you see this thing, we've come up with this before, the least value of n, this is suggesting to you inequality time. I'm going to solve the inequality. Um, so we're adding together this geometric series. I can see it's doubling each time times by two. So R is going to be two. And I can all already see that A is one. Um, how many terms do we need basically so that this sum exceeds greater than two million? Now, I don't want to keep writing out two million. I'm going to write two times 10 to the power six. So here's our formula again which we'll write down 
um, we want s the sum of n terms to exceed 2 million a is 1 and r is 2 we're multiplying by 2 so now we can plug everything in so we want our sum which is this uh, 2 to the power n minus 1 over r minus 1 we want that to exceed 2 million so um, this bit at the bottom here just becomes 1 so we can get rid of that uh, we can expand the brackets as well we'll do that so we'll get 2 to the power n at minus 1 is greater than 2 times 10 to the power 6 we will add 1 to both sides so basically you get 2 million and 1 is greater than 2 times 10 to the power 6 plus 1 times 10 to the power 6 and then we want to add 1 to that then we're going to do a log of both sides so log of 2 to the power n and greater than log um, 2 times 10 to the power 6 plus 1 so we're doing the log of all of that the uh, n we can bring down to the front and then I'm going to divide both sides by log 2 so log 2 times 10 to the power 6 are 2 million and 1 all divided by log 2 now again um, my calculator when I type in log I'm gonna to have to put a base in so I could use an actual log yeah and that saves me having to type a base in unless you've got a calculator where you press log and it gives you base 10 oh, and I think I found it it's the button you need to do shift and negative so if you do shift and then the button that says negative on it like this I can see in yellow or orange it says log there so that's another way of doing it if you don't want to use natural log you don't want to type the base in so there I found the button so on the previous question you could do this as well so let me do I'm going to do shift and log there we go uh, 2 million 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 plus 1 2 million and 1 divided by log 2 so shift the negative button and 2 and I end up with um, n needs to be greater than 20.93 and it goes on <clears throat> because n needs to be a whole number um, n needs to be 21 so we'll say 21 terms for this to exceed or that series or some of the series to exceed 2 million right you should now be able to do exercise 3d on pages 72 to 73 of the textbook